I'm super excited about the Grampians Peaks Trail. Um, it's finally gonna open this year. Spring of 2021 is, is the date. The Grampians Peaks Trail is gonna start at Mount Zero in the north and it's gonna go all the way to the south at Mount Sturgeon and Dunkeld. The Grampians Peaks Trail is 160 kilometers long. Uh, it's meant to be hiked in 13 days and 11 nights. What if you don't want to spend those 11 nights in a tent on a campsite? What if you prefer to spend those nights uh, in more style, maybe some accommodation? Or maybe you just don't want to hike the whole thing in one go. Maybe you want to hike it bit by bit over the years. Well, there's good news for you. You can hike the Peaks Trail in day walks and I'm going to show you how. This video is sponsored by Wonderland Cottages, spacious, self-contained eco-villas in the heart of the Grampians. More about them at the end of the video. The trail starts at Mount Zero picnic area. Uh, interestingly, Mount Zero itself is not officially part of the GPT, but I think a lot of people will probably opt to hike up there as well. It's just a nice start to say from Mount Zero to Dunkeld or from Mount Zero to Mount Sturgeon. Day walk one of the Grampians Peaks Trail starts from Mount Zero picnic area and would lead to Roses Gap Road. It is about 15 kilometers long. It leads through some absolutely amazing scenery in the north of the National Park. Um, the trail to up to Mount Thomas Stapleton is just out of this world. Uh, windswept caves and fantastic views, amphitheater-like scenery. The first part is an existing trail or very close to an existing trail, but once you cross copper mine track, it's a new trail altogether and it leads on top of a range which hasn't been accessible by any trail so far, which I think should offer quite some nice views both north to Mount Stapleton and south to Mount Difficult. Day walk 2 would start from Roses Gap Road and head up to Mount Difficult uh, and then down on the other side to Mount Difficult Road, which is the road which goes around Lake Wartuk. Uh, the way up uh, is along Dead Bullock Creek, uh, which currently is open as the a waterfalls of Gar trail. So if you were unlucky and you had a bit of rain, uh, you might have some really nice waterfalls there. It's quite spectacular. But also if you didn't have any rain, if there are no waterfalls, the hike up to Mount Difficult and the scenery up there on the range is just fantastic. Day walk number three, you have the choice to make it a very long day of 26 kilometers and hike all the way to Hall's Gap from where you left off before on Mount Difficult Road or you could make it two days which in this case I call uh, 3A and 3B. If you were to hike it in one long day you would start at Mount Difficult Road, hike back up to the Mount Difficult Range and link up with the Grampians Peaks Trail there and then continue past a Warthog Lookout and then down to Hall's Gap. Once you are on top of the Mount Difficult range, there shouldn't be too much elevation gain anymore. And especially once you're past Lake Wartuk Lookout, uh, it's a nice and steady downhill walk into Hall's Gap. But it is 26 kilometers. If you were to break it up into two days, you would stop at Lake Wartuk Lookout. That is 15 kilometers. And the next day you would hike from Wartuk Lookout down to Hall's Gap. Uh, which is 11 kilometers and a fairly easy walk. Day walk number four uh, is a similar choice. You can make it one long day or you can break it up into two days. If you make it a long day, you would hike all the way to uh, Borough Huts, which is 22 kilometers. If you make it uh, two short days, the first day would lead to Mount Rosea car park, which is nine kilometers. And the second day from there down to Borough Huts, which is 13 kilometers. The trail leads through one of the signature areas of the Grampians, the Wonderland Range. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic scenery to hike through. There's so many rock formations and canyons and lookouts. It's, it's fantastic. And while the kilometers, especially for two days, don't seem like all that much, there's a lot of elevation gain in there and it's very uneven surface to walk over. So it does take some time. Plus you might want to spend uh, some time in Hall's Gap first, maybe have breakfast there. The second part of day four leads over Mount Rosea and it's a equally fantastic area to hike in. It is a little bit of everything the Grampians have to offer. 
fantastic views, wonderful forest, fantastic rock formations. It's just, it's one of my favorite spots to hike. On day walk number five, we head into uncharted territory. The day would start at Borough Huts and would lead up to Mount William Car Park, just maybe 45 minutes below the summit of Mount William. So if you're keen, you can also hike up there uh, in the evening and, and enjoy the summit twice. The day is roughly 13 kilometers long. It's one of the areas I'm most excited about to hike in because it just, on the map, it looks absolutely fantastic. They, just the place names, the Seven Dials, the Battlements, Redman Bluff, the view's got to be absolutely amazing from up there. I really, really look forward to getting into this area. Day walk number six is again fairly long, 21 kilometers. It starts at Mount William Car Park, heads up to the summit of Mount William and then goes to Jimmy Creek Road. This is over the major Mitchell Plateau. This is an existing trail which has been open for many years. Um, but it has very nice views from up there and it's going to be good to hike this. Day walk number seven starts at Jimmy Creek Road and goes to Yarram Gap Road. That's about 14 kilometers. The distance again doesn't sound like much, but it's going to be quite undulating. First I wasn't too thrilled about the idea that they put the trail into the Mount William range. I thought it would be much nicer to be in the much more rugged Sarah range. But now I think maybe having the views off the Sarah range rather than having views from the Sarah range uh, is a lot nicer. Especially in the morning, the light should be quite fantastic on those rugged peaks. Daywalk number 8 goes from Yaram Gap Road and goes all the way till the trail crosses the Grampians Tourist Road. That's just about 11 kilometers. Again, it's going to be undulating first, but then it heads a bit into a plane until it gets to, to the road itself. I hope that the views of the Sarah Range are going to be quite fantastic from there. Daywalk number 9 goes from the Grampians Tourist Road to Cassidy's Gap Road. That's about 14 kilometers. Um, on this day, the trail crosses the plain between the Mount William Range and the, and the um, Sarah Range and heads up into the Sarah Range. Uh, it's going to be quite a bit of elevation gain in there. Um, it's going to be a very nice day, I think. You, you can finally look over the Sarah Range to the other side into the Victoria Valley. Daywalk number 10 is a fairly hard day. It starts at Cassidy Scap Road and goes over Signal Peak and Mount Abrupt and the Piccanini to Victoria Valley Road. That's about 16 kilometers and there's going to be a lot of elevation gain in there, three peaks. But the views got to be absolutely fantastic. The views from Signal Peak and Mount Abrupt are some of the best in the Grampians. And finally, day 11 goes from Victoria Valley Road to Dunkeld. That's a very easy day. It just goes over Mount Sturgeon. It's just eight kilometers long and then um, meanders a bit through the plain and the valley. So there you have it. 11 days or 13 days, however you want to hike it. Uh, all in day walks, all possible with car shuffles. All trailheads uh, are accessible by two-wheel drive. Sometimes the roads can be a little bit rough um, if there has been a lot of rain or they haven't been um, graded in a while, but then you just got to drive a little bit slower and should work out. If you want to hike this or other trails in the Grampians, Wonderland Cottages would make an ideal base for your stay. With their spacious self-contained eco-villas, they are perfect for couples, families and small groups. Located in easy walking distance to the center of Halls Gap, yet tucked away in a quiet forest setting, the property borders the National Park, which makes for great wildlife viewing. Wonderland Cottages strives to minimize your holiday's ecological footprint. All their toilet paper, tissues and paper towel is made from bamboo. There is a water recycling system in place. All electricity is 100% green renewable and solar power is in the making. All cottages have two bedrooms, a large living area with fireplace and modern aircon, a fully specked out kitchen, a bathroom with separate toilet, two private decks and a private barbecue. But don't just take my word for it. Check out the great ratings on Google, Booking.com and Airbnb. For the best price and special offers, always book directly at wonderlandcottages.com.au. So yeah, as I said, I'm really excited about the GPT. Uh, it's going to open up completely new areas 
of the Grampians National Park to hikers and that's always nice. 21 Ks.